All right, so what to expect from this presentation? Um, who can help you in your research? What records can I typically find to discover my, my Missouri ancestry? Where can I find these resources and records? How do I use the information I find? My own search for my early Boone County ancestor. Again, it's a very typical outcome, but I wanted to see it. Oops, okay. All right. So obviously we're gonna start by where, what places you can go here um, to do your research on your mid-Missouri ancestor. Obviously the Daniel Boone Regional Library is a major resource. And over the last, as I've been employed here for over 30 years, we've really grown our local history and geological um, in our reference collection and our, some items you can check out. So if you have in Missouri ancestry, the library is a good resource. And I'll talk more about that uh, on some other things that we have online. Um, the State Historic Society of Missouri um, in Columbia, the brand new building on the corner of um, Locust and Fifth. Uh, the Missouri State Archives in Jefferson City, Missouri. Um, I'm, I'm gonna tell you about some records that I get there that, are, that you'll see the samples in this um, sampling today. Uh, the General Officer Society of Boone County in Central Missouri. And of course, most of you know that's located over on Ponderosa um, at the Boone County History and Culture Center. And the General Oscar Library is there. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Um, the Family History Library. Um, now, you, most of you think about Salt Lake City, but actually there's a local center over in the Highlands. And you can certainly get things there, but you can also go on to their website, familysearch.org, and find things about your local ancestors as well. And then, of course, uh, the Missouri State Genealogical Association. Um, they have a great website that shows information on everything that's been published. And because that um, organization started in Columbia and I'm very familiar with it, there are lots of things. Mid-Missouri is very well covered in our history of access to types of information that's gonna help you with your Mid-Missouri roots. And um, just by going online to their, their um, website, you will see some resources that were, might help you with your research and sometimes some more up-to-date stuff. Um, and then of course, you always have to go back to your family, your own family wherever they may live and all the branches are going to have information on your history. Not everyone gets the family Bible. Not everyone gets uh, the certificates or the diplomas that great grandma had or the eyeglasses or, um, or the other little bitty you know, trinkets of their lifetime that were passed down during the generation. But all those trinkets tell a story. And so by, by finding more of your family, you might find some information on, who knows, maybe they wrote a family history had a branch of the family history you didn't have. But anyway, let's go on down to the next screen. Um, the Daniel Boone Regional Library obviously has a great reference collection um, at each of our libraries. And of course, the, the main one in Columbia Public Library has a very extensive local history um, collection on New Missouri. Everything from gazetteers, maps, uh, newspapers, uh, city directories. And then of course, we have a lot of how-to books you can check out. Um, Genealogical Helper. Um, and then of course we also have um, online, we have ancestry.com library edition. And I might add that right now they've extended, because of the pandemic, they've offered a lot to use that at home, not just at the library. So you can actually log in with your library card um, if you live in Boone and Callaway County and actually access ancestry.com, the library edition at home. And they've extended that through September. We just got word it was gonna stop in June and now it's gonna go through the end of September. So um, that's a really good website to use for searching your family, wherever they come from, even from other countries. Um, the library also subscribes to a website called Heritage Quest. And um, Heritage Quest is one that you can actually use at home, 24-7 um, with your library card, it's continuous. And we've had these at the library for over a decade. And um, so you should be proud that your library has, um, you know, offer those subscriptions to you as a, as a library um, user and taxpayer. And then of course, obviously, um, Heritage Quest, um, I do presentations on Ancestry.com and Heritage Quest. And hopefully when the pandemic's over, I'll start doing um, on-site presentations, but you can actually come to the library and use those and do some genealogy help classes. And of course, the library has internet access. And so having internet access, you're going to have access to all kinds of websites and um, of course printing 10 cents a page you can't pass that up really um, if you want to print something out so but the Daniel Boone Regional Library is certainly one of your resources you should be looking at all right um, 
obviously with genealogy, you're gonna begin with yourself. And if you look in this picture, you'll see a picture of me and my dad. And what's funny about this picture is, is my dad, um, I didn't know this picture existed until I started doing genealogical research as a teenager. I went down to the local Mexico ledger office and they had a file on me because my dad run for an office once and my dad was the very first treasurer of the local union, uh, brick, brick plant, brick, brick, mace, brick layers union. And so my father was looking at old articles in the old newspapers in their office. And here I am lying on the floor in my nice corduroy jacket, taking a nap. But as far as one of the pictures, it's one of the favorite pictures of my lifetime that I've had. And if I ever write a book, it's gonna be in the front page. But that's me and my dad. Who would have thought that I'd be reading microfilm for the next 40 years after that picture? Okay, so uh, let's start with parents' birth certificates. So if you're gonna start from yourself and go back in time, you need to start with the records that exist. Um, so back when I started doing Joshua research, I actually went and told my parents that we need to buy your copies of your death certificate, your birth certificates. Um, and so we actually ordered them. And of course, they were getting ready to do their social security stuff. So in June of 1987, you'll see I, I actually ordered extra copies of my mom and dad's birth certificates. And of course, those things you see on the right here, it's got my father's name, Raymond Lee Dollins, born in Wilson Township, Audrain County. It's listing his parents as Frank Dollins and Irene Norman. So right there, you're getting the maiden name of the mother. And of course, you're getting the birthplace and the birthday of August Oh, I'm sorry, I should say August 10th, sorry, not August 19th. Um, and then you're getting the occupations of the parents. These are all important clues of you to find your ancestor each generation back. And of course, 1926, we know that my father is living in Wilson Township in Audrain County, and his father is a farmer, and his, mo and his mom is a housewife. So right there, we know that the 1930 census, I should see my father as a four-year-old. And that therefore, this is a very important record. So the next one is my mother's birth certificate. Very similar, um, except that um, she was born in Montgomery County, Missouri. And what's fascinating is that you notice um, my grandfather, F.W. Isgrig, it was very common in that time period for men to use their initials and not their full name. And you'll see people, men's initials all, all the time. And then my mother, my grandmother's maiden name was Stella Moore Yates. And for whatever reason, they didn't put her middle name in there. But I think the more important thing on this, besides the fact that my grandfather was a painter um, and his wife is a housewife, his wife is a housewife, is that the birthplaces are there. My grandfather Fred was born in Galesburg, Illinois, and my grandmother was born in Middletown. Now, this is all you're going to see on this branch because this is not part of the branch that goes back to my early Boone County ancestry. But I wanted to show you that you should request these documents when you can and look for these for clues and putting your answers in the time and the place. Because that's what we're doing. We're putting people in the time and the place with the records of their time. All right, so, so far we've got me born 1964 with my parents and my mother. So I'm gonna start doing this so you can, you can feel through and go through every generation of the family clear up to my, back to the one um, from 200 years ago to um, Joshua Freeman. But I'm putting this screen up so you can get an idea of who my ancestors are. And each screen you'll see it grow and grow each generation. So obviously an obituary um, is another resource that most everyone has about their family. You think, well, when someone dies, there's their obituary. Well, this is my father's obituary that I actually wrote and uh, there's a picture of him. And so this is published in the local paper that, but actually it was published in five newspapers because my sisters and brothers lived in various towns around Missouri. So even though the obituary here was published in the Mexico Ledger, his obituary actually appeared in um, the Edina paper, the, Cent the Springfield, Missouri papers, uh, Boone, Columbia, Boone County, Centre in Mexico, because his descendants lived in various towns. So always as a clue, if you can't find an obituary for someone in the town they lived in, look for one of their relatives who was a survivor, look for a kid or a grandkid and look for the obituary in their town. But you see mine's kind of long because I'm the youngest of 14 kids and my father was one of 10. So lots of names. But again, more clues to our family's past. Um, then we have my grandparents' obituaries and these do cor correlate with the going back on my, my Boone County roots. And so there's my grandfather's obituary and there's my grandmother's. And these were actually co copies of the obituaries that the local, um, believe it or not, these two obituaries were actually made into um, memorial cards on um, and laminated by the local newspaper office. 
And these are photocopies of those laminations uh, of their obituaries published in the Mexico ledger. And that was something they offered for people to have um, years ago in the paper. But there you have, you see there they stamped the date on there because that was in their files. But again, these obituaries leads to clues, to the next generation. And you see where Frank Dollins, um, it says his parents um, are Robert and Margaret Lily Chick Dollins. Um, it should be Lily Margaret Chick Dollins. Chick was her maiden name. And he was born in 1905 in Audrain County. And so now we're gonna go to the next page so you can kind of get an idea of what else is going on with um, the next generation um, of my Boone County family. So um, my grandfather's social security application for an account. Now, this is a very important document that you might not think about, but believe it or not, if you have a social security card, this is the application that you filled out when you applied for a social security card. If you look on this record, on the upper right-hand corner, you see that my grandfather's social security card started with 500-10- something else. I can't quite see the rest of it, but this is what the form was in 1930s. If you look in the lower left-hand corner, you will see that the date that he applied for this was January 21st, 1938. Now, that's a very important time because the, the, the Social Security Administration started in 1935. And as time went on, and as more people filled out for benefits due to Social Security because of the depression, my father, my grandfather, being a farmer and being a poor farmer, filled out the information for applying for his card. Now, if you notice on line four, it says that he is unemployed. Well, it's because it's the depression. You'll also notice on the next line down, you'll see um, number item number seven. It says his birth date is March 28th, 1903. Now, what's interesting about that fact is that my grandfather was not born in 1903. He was born in 1905. And if you ever notice about the Social Security Administration, you were given Social Security based on your age and you were competing with everybody else in the county where you were living. So there was not very much money going around. And so, both of my grandfathers, and I don't know why this happened, but my grandfather's that on my mom's, on my dad's side, this one, Frank, he had, he, he added two years to his age. Um, and then my grandfather on my mom's side, that Anthony Isbrig, he, he had five years. So I don't know if they just did it on purpose or what, but unfortunately those things are stuck with some of their records, but I had proof of their age and other records like school records and census records that prove otherwise. But this is what they told the government when Social Security came out. They one had two year discrepancy that made some two years older, and then five. But you should look for these because they tell the parents' names. This is the first record I have of, of his father being Robert Dollins and his mother, Lula Chick. And of course, he, when my grandfather was born, there was no birth certificates in 1903 or 1905 when he was born. And so, therefore, um, this is a, one, the, one of the first federal record of my father, my grandfather, plus. It's almost like a delayed birth certificate because he's telling someone who his parents are in maiden name. And oftentimes you'll see people who are, uh, who are um, if they've changed their name, it'll have their, their, their old name written above it. Um, if someone's been married, it'll have their married names all there. And we go to the very bottom, you see my grandfather's signature, Frankie Dollins. And so that's kind of another fascinating thing about, again, you're finding records of their time period. The next one is going to be my grandmother, his wife. And you'll see it's a more different one because she didn't apply for it until um, 1972 in May when her fa her husband, the, the farmer and breadwinner, retired. And she was old enough to receive benefits at age 66. And so therefore, you see hers is a computerized generated um, record as opposed to a handwritten one form. And there's her signature, Elsie Irene Dollins, housewife. And then you'll see like her mailing address on the very bottom. And then you'll see, excuse me, She's attached to Frank L. Dollins' husband because her benefits are coming through her husband. And if you look where it says claim number on the upper left-hand corner, on her name, the claim number is under her husband's number, that 510-9832. So we know that Elsie Irene and Frank are husband and wife, and she's receiving her benefits through her husband. So again, very important records. You've also got her birthplace um, and her parents' names, Myrtle Bell Zook and Wesley Norman. And you'll also notice that the name of the town, Fairbury, um, in Avoca Township, um, Illinois, it's actually Fairbury, not Fairbury, Fair, Fairby. And Avoca is actually a township, not a county. But uh, for whatever reason, 
that's what she put down there. And she applied for this in May of 1972. And again, it's a computer generalized form. You see the difference. And you see the telephone number down there, 6823050. I mean, that's her phone number she's had for all of her life until she passed away. Which is another fascinating item about someone in their lifetime, what records it would, it would give you clues. All right, and this is a picture of the family. And I put this picture in here because it's a three generation picture. And the lady on this, you, you see the lady holding the baby, that's that's Elsie Irene with the baby and her kids. And the guy with the hat's her husband, Frank. And then her, the, Frank's mother is laid in the plaid. And her name is Lou, which we'll talk about. And Lulu Margaret Chick is my Boone County lady. And we're gonna talk about more of her ancestry in a few minutes on some other documents. Um, this is the chart I use. Um, you know, in genealogy, you can be fancy and you can make charts um, handwritten. You can make them on computers. But when I first started doing this, I started putting them on graph paper. And to keep track of people in the family, this is what I did. So this is like Lily Margaret Chick and her husband, Robert. And you see all the family members just from those kids in the top row and then all their grandkids. So you can see there's lots and lots of people in my family. <laughs> but I just want to show you it's a nice way of tracking now you have computer software to put that up there, but you don't have to have software. Just got a piece of paper, graph paper, and just start plotting your family. Um, you don't have to, have to spend a lot of money on geology, but you can if you want to. All right, so now we've got from my name to my father, Raymond Lee Dollins, and his wife, Dorothy. And then we've already talked about Frank, Frankie Lee or Francis Lee is Rock Raymond's father. And, and then Elsie Irene's his wife. So now we've got three generations, Tim, Raymond, then Frank. Um, on my path to back to my Boone County roots. So now we're gonna go to Frank's mother. Um, her, her, his obituary said her name was Lily Margaret Chick Dollins. And I put this up here because another resource you can use a lot online is Find a Grave. And if you look at here, someone's put on Find a Grave, the name of my, um, our, our great grandmother, Lily Margaret Chick and her husband, Robert Elise Dollins. And it adds the name of who's there, you can, this is a great website. If you don't want to publish your family history, you might want to look at family, find a grave um, and look um, what's there, add to it and just put your stuff there. I see a lot, a lot of people have on find a grave um, obituaries. Um, if there's no stone or just as a, they had a picture of the person. They had other children and parents. This one right here, um, it says created by Teresa. Teresa is my first cousin once removed or in layman's terms, the second cousin. She's my first cousin's daughter. And she inherited my aunt Betty Lou's, um, her, her grandmother's collection, which I helped, um, me and my aunt did a lot of genealogy in the past. And she's what got me started on it. And um, so Teresa is, uh, is the one maintaining this page on Find a Grave. But you should look for Find a Grave for all your ancestors and see where they're living and update it when you can. Uh, here's here's uh, Lily Margaret Chick's parents, Wade Netherland Chick, and we're gonna talk about him later. But again, there's Arabella, his wife, and Arabella, um, born 1838, she is my Boone County ancestor. She's my first person born in Boone County. Um, and you see it says born in Boone County. Uh, well, um, it says, it's kind of funny. Arabella was born in Boone County, but died in Audrain. But her husband, Wade Netherlandchick, although he's born in Kentucky, he died in Boone County at his daughter's house. So they're both Boone County, um, you know, had Boone County um, roots. All right, so this is a, um, an obituary for my great grandmother, Lou, and I want to show you this because I wanted to, it's going to give a record that it's going to tell her parents' names. And if you look right here, it's going to say that she was the daughter of um, uh, the late Mr. And Mrs. Wade Chick, born in Audrain County, March 5th, 1870. And this is a picture of her and her sons. Um, and actually, this is actually at the cemetery site when her youngest son, Willis, died in 1946. So everyone in the family has this snapshot. A lot of poor families around did not take portraits in the studio except for major events like weddings. And so this picture was taken at the funeral of her youngest son who died in 1946 at Jefferson Barracks. And someone said, let's take a picture of you and the kids. And they were all at the funeral. And you see all these farmers, they're not in their bib overalls, they're actually in their Sunday best. And so it's kind of funny for me to see family resemblances of both myself um and, and, and other people and like there's the, the guy right there the second to, to the your left is my grandfather frank with the really thick red hair and i had the thick hair myself so i can relate to that but it's fun to watch to look at pictures and see people's um other people's faces in your own your family history now all right so this is M Lily margaret chick's um death certificate a death certificate is a very important document that you're going to use in genealogy 
It's going to tell birthplace, it's going to tell diseases. Um, it's very typical. She died in 1953. She died in a nursing home. Her regular, her regular address was Mexico and 1019 West Boulevard, but she actually died in the Hewlett Nursing Home in Boone County. So even though she was born in Audrey County, she died in Boone County. So I have lots of Boone County roots. But the important thing for this is besides um, details about her and her family, you've also got relationships and um, you've got her, um, the diseases that she died of and might have had when she died and her burial. And uh, we've already seen her stone a while ago. So now you've got the, ped the pedigree thus far. You've got me, then my father, Raymond, my grandpa, Frankie, and his mother, Luli, and her husband, Robert Elise Dollins. And of course, the Dollins name, I'm the fourth, you know, starting so far, I'm the Dollins, the fourth generation of Dollins on this little, this tree here. All right, so then we get to, when Luli passed away, obviously her obituary said her mother's name was Arabella. So this is a copy of Arabella Chick's obituary. Now she died in 1915, and this is only one of her obituaries, but obituaries at that time period weren't exactly um, uh, flowery, unless you were a prominent male, or you could have been, or someone submitted. A lot of times the, the clergy submitted one, but Arabella living out in the county, um, this is the obituary that she had uh, when she passed away at age 77. And then to your right, you will see the funeral home record. So when you, when someone in your family passes away, you would go to the funeral home and they have a big old ledger book and they would just, as they received um, a new person who's passed away, they would fill out the record of the funeral and they would have everything from the cost of everything to what they died of and all the information they need to, not only for the person who's paying for the funeral and the bereaved, but also the details on the person. And you see, um, it just mentions here that uh, the order was given by the widow and others, which means the widow, widower, um, and probably the daughters. And, um, you know, of care means that, that they're the ones securing it. You got the place there she was buried. If it had been in a large cemetery, they would have shown the little bitty diagram. And this is very typical of funeral home record books from about 1910, clear up until the present. However, prior to 1910 in Missouri, you're probably just going to get like a one-line entry for a death record. And that's kind of sad, but this is, like a, this is like a major thing for you is to look for a funeral home that might have the records of your ancestor. And then look for obituaries in the local newspaper. Um, here's her obituary that was submitted to the, um, the, the um, state. And you see where the daughter, Luli Dollins, is the um, informant. And she knew that her grandparents, even though they were, um, were James Wilson and Margaret Freeman, and even though she never met her grandparents because they were dead before she was born, um, she knew their names. So her mother had relayed to her what her grandparents' names were, even though um, she didn't know them personally, she knew their names. And thank goodness, because it's one of the great proofs I have to show that uh, Arabella Chick um, was, a, was a daughter of James Wilson and Margaret Freeman. But again, uh, death certificates are very important to have in your family history, and they're very typical from 1910 to the present. Um, so this is the funeral home record of Arabella's husband, Wade Netherland Chick. And you see the difference in the book just, just in four years. They've gone to a different type of ledger, different format. And this one actually asks for the name of the father and the mother. Now, I will tell you that Wade Netherland Chick's father's name was not John Chick. His grandfather was. Um, his father died young. His uncle, who raised him, was John Chick. And his grandfather was John, but his grandfather was Silas. But the informant, whoever put get, get, get that information to them, they didn't, I mean, I've proven it otherwise, but that's what the record says. But again, you're getting proof on their death and you're getting the birth date and all that fun stuff. And you see, his, it says he's born 1840. It's probably 1841, but it's okay. There's always confusion. And in the obituary you see here, it says he has um, three daughters and one sister and many friends will survive. Well, that one sister I was able to track down and luckily she passed away and I was able to track her down through various other records and proof of relationship. And she actually had on her death series the correct parents' name. So we're thankful that she died later. And I'm thankful that I found in the old newspapers where he went to go visit her in 1918 before he died to go see her in Chicago. So again, newspapers are very important, obituaries and then the death records. Um, and of course, here's his death certificate where it says Silas. And the grand, ironically, the, grand, the grandson, Albert, knew the grandfather. His grandfather's name was Silas more than his mother did. So it's kind of funny that 
that the grand the grandson Albert knew that the correct uh, name for the, the way Netherlands chick father was was Silas, and of course the diseases. Oh, by the way, so this is um he's a retired farmer, widowed, and he died in Colombia, believe it or not, of bronchial pneumonia, and again he died during the um, basically at the tail end of the uh, Spanish influenza. As most of you know, that lasted for several years, and people were dying of pneumonia after they got the influenza. So he came over to visit his daughter and passed away here in Columbia in March 10th, 1919. This is a picture of that family. And this is my Boone County family. And I wanted to show you this picture because I wanted to get an idea of what to expect for photos of the 1880s in Boone County. And the couple you see seated there, that's Wade Netherlands Chick and his wife, Arabella. And they were married on December 23rd, 1866 in Columbia. Arabella grew up in Boone County, in Boone County around Columbia in her aunts and uncles homes because her parents died young. But this is her husband who uh, came to visit his relatives and who were living in Boone County, the Chick family, um, um, sat around Rock Ridge and around Hinton on both sides of Columbia. And he met her and they got married in 1866 after the Civil War was over. But that's their three daughters. But I want to show, this is like a really prized possession in our family's picture because it's just a really cool picture of the three daughters and their, and their, and their, um, their mother. Um, all right, so this is kind of a hard to read record, but this is basically the, the, the marriage license of Wade and Arabella in 1866 getting married. And I positively couldn't make a better copy, but you see on like the second set of pa papers, it says Wade N. Chick and Miss Arabella Wilson. It's kind of hard to read. If my mouse goes up there, you see it says Wade N. Chick and Arabella Wilson. And that's their marriage right there. Um, they were solemnized the 20, the, the, yeah, the 23rd day of December, 1866. So again, the record, the courthouse has lots of records. You should go there if you have records on your family. And this is very typical of the records of marriages in Boone County for that time period where they just, the minister would go up there and they'd pay a filing fee and put the obituary in one line. And that's how good the copy looks when you try to, uh, when you try to see the original document. Um, this is a marriage license of their daughter um, just 30 years later when Lulu Margaret Chicks married um, Robert Dollins. Um, and this is in um, 1894 in Audrain County. And it gives you clues too. Uh, it says that at his residence, so they got married at J.J. Winscott, just the piece. Ironically, that J.J. Winscott or Wayne Scott, he's also a relative of ours as well on my, grand, on my grandfather Robert's side of the family. So obviously they knew everybody and you know relatives were, were part of the uh, clergy and part of the uh, does the piece. Um, now, this is a census record. And of course, um, if you go to Heritage Quest and Ancestry.com, you're going to be able to look at the census records. And I implore you to do that because every 10 years you're going to find them. And again, I apologize for this being a little blurry, but I couldn't get a better copy. But you can see down here, it has the Dollins family down here. So it's Robert and Luli and the, the birth of the stepdaughter, Mock. And then it goes to the sons, Albert, Thomas, George, and Wade who were born in 1900. As you remember, my grandfather was not born until 1905, so he's not there yet. But I wanted to show you what a census looks like, and you should look on the census records for your ancestor in Mid-Missouri, because that's one of the major um, resources. Um, this is Robert Elise Dollins' death certificate. Uh, that's Louie's husband, and he's important because he is the other half of her, and that's how I get my Dollins name. And um, he was born in Audrain County in 1871 with parents John Dollins and Melinda Stewart. And you see where Lula signs her name, Lula. Um, the Bible says her name was Luli Margaret. And sometimes someone thought because she was Grandma Lou, they thought it was Louisa. And it was never Louisa except in one court record. So well, I've always gone by Luli or Lula. And they always called her Grandma Lou. But unfortunately, this is my Robert Elise Dollins who um, was not feeling well. And you see that his death was a suicide. So there you go. Um, and there's another story there, but I'm not gonna go into it. <laughs> Um, now, here's another part of the census pages. I'm sorry, I couldn't get a better copy of it. I tried and tried, but this is the family on the census. But um, I do want you to look at the census records um, of your ancestry to get the, because there are some the headings on there that are going to help you find the next link back. Um, this is that uh, this is that Lou chick um, in the nice little plaid dress again. And that's her older sister, Annie. And the reason I put this picture in here is because Luli's husband is the guy to the closest to her. That's my Robert Dollins. Well, Luli's sister Annie married his older brother Tom. So the two Dollins boys married the two Chick sisters. 
And so I put that in there because that is very common for people to marry into other families. Like the kids of this family marries the kids of other family because they're just one or two farms over. They marry someone's local. They, they're in the same economical status. They probably go to the same church, same school, that they know each other. But this picture just cracks me up because I don't really have any pictures of Tom or Robert and Lily together, but I have pictures of Tom and his brother and then Lily and her sister. So this is the pictures I use to, to, you know, to document their lives. Um, just, but I, also, I, just, I love the outfits too. Um, anyway, so this is the actual family Bible from Wade and Arabella Chick's um, Bible. And I want to show you that because those things exist. And I just got lucky that my, my grandmother um, held on to this for a long time before my aunt got it. And we, I was going to make copies of it. But there's the three girls right there with their mother and father in the family Bible. Um, they were religious in the Baptist church, and there's their Bible. Very good resource you to look for. Now we get into court documents. Now, this is the next generation back. It says Arabella Wilson's guardianship. Now, Lulu Margaret Chick's mother, as you, you know, is named Arabella. And you also know that um, she was born um, the daughter of James Wilson and Margaret Freeman. Well, it just so happens that her father died when she was less than two or three years old. And her mother died when she was about 15 or 16 years old. So on her father's side, she received 40 acres of land that he had homestead in Audrain County, which is where Arabella lived all of her married life, clear up to the day she died. Like Arabella lived on their father's farm from the time she was married in 1866 to 1950. But this court document is the only document that exists for her guardianship in Audrain County. And what's fascinating about this article is that there's no probate for her father. But if you look on the very bottom of this page, it says that she is the daughter of James Wilson, deceased. And even though it says infant heir, it just means that she's underage. She's not an infant. She was, this was done in 19, 1848 when her mother died, also when she was a minor. Her mother had died before June 19, 1948. But, but the, the important part is down here is that the names of these gentlemen on the very bottom that are, that are being her warranties and guarantees. Well, Dabney Austin was her uncle by marriage. Uh, Dabney was married to her, her mother, Margaret's sister. And Henry Keaton, we don't know how he's related, but the next person is Reuben Wilson. And Reuben Wilson and John Wilson were brothers of James. And they also lived next door to the Wilsons. And the Wilsons then the township, their father, David. But Arabella, on her, because she had a legacy of both her mother and her father, people on both sides of the family were in charge of doing the security for it and making sure that she got her money as she grew up. And I have some interesting cards I'm not gonna show here, but she actually, they rented her property out to various farmers. And then she got paid every year as a teenager for the monies um, off farm labor that people used to do rent out her farm. So she got married and moved the farm herself. But it's a very important document that's typical of that time period. Um, here's Arabella um, in 18 and um, 50 with the Dabney Austin family. You see, she's like the third person from the very bottom. She's with her aunt Jane and her, and her first cousin, Sarah, and it says Arabella Wilson, age 14. And she's a niece. I mean, we, they don't say she's a niece, but we know she's a niece. And the Eli Northcutt family is close to this family as well. They're not necessarily kin to us, but they are they are on court documents that the Northcutt family has had lots of court documents with our family. So. I'm beginning to think that they're like the next closest neighbors who actually had money and they were, he was actually um, probably literate and he was able to take care of some of their financial things because he was like the next door neighbor. So it's always important who, who you live next to as well because they're going to be your neighbors and they're going to be people that are affecting your family's life. And this is 1850 um, in Boone County and it, they were actually just north of uh, Columbia. Um, here's Arabella again on the same year. She got hit twice and she's lived with the John Graham and her other aunt Elizabeth. And you see here it says Elizabeth is age 49, born in North Carolina. That's important because Arabella's mother is Margaret and her aunt Elizabeth was born in North Carolina in basically 1801. Um, so we know that the family of, of Arabella's mother was living in North Carolina in 1801. So that helps us put the family in the migration pattern as well. But again, Arabella got hit twice because she was living with different aunts after her mother died and her father had been dead. Again, very important documents to look for in your family tree. Again, I apologize, there's another census record that shows um, uh, Lulu with her husband, I'm sorry, it's the Chick family. 
And if you look down here on this one family, it says um, W.R. Chick and his wife, um, um, Arab, Arabella and their daughters, uh, Luli and um, Luli and then Annie C. And, but you see, all, but the important thing on this thing is to notice that her father, um, he was born in Kentucky and parents born in Virginia. And then it says um, um, for Annie, um, it says Kentucky, Kentucky and, um, and um, North Carolina. So that actually says North Carolina there. And that's where they were born. Um, let's go to the next page because I'm kind of blurry. I apologize for the blurriness. I just... Now, church records. You wouldn't believe it, but a lot of church records do exist for all these churches around here. And this is the actual church from um, when my grandmother moved her letter. And this shows where um, the very bottom line, you see where it says, um, brother, chicken, wife, united with the church by letter, sister, Molly McDonald called for um, for the for the, the acceptance of the letter. So this is actually 1884. This is the church that might where that cemetery was. They were buried at New Hope. They met in 1884 and they accepted by letter um, Wade and Arabella's letter of um, being a member of the church. So look for those records and a lot of those are at the State Historic Society on um, they've been microfilmed during the bicentennial. Now well, another cool church that my grandmother great great grandmother Arabella um, went to was the was the Brethren Church, what we call now the Bear Creek Church, north of Columbia. And this is where she joined as a young person, as a teenager. And it's kind of hard to read. Her name is on there, but this is actually when the church was founded. But the next page is gonna show you, oh, oh, there's a page on here that shows you, um, I don't think I have it, but it shows you when she joined the church as a teenager. And I'll show you a page where it mentions her name when she moved. And then someone wrote that her married name was Chick. So it's kind of cool to have that. But this is like the rules of the church that she belonged to um, when she first joined. And that church started in 1824. Um, and that's now it's called the B. And the church doesn't exist now, but you get an idea. So let's go to the pedigree so far. We've got me and then my father, Raymond, then his father, Francis. And then Frank, or Frank is the son of Lulu Margaret Chick. And then she's the daughter of Arabella Wilson Chick. And then we got Arabella is the daughter of Margaret or Peggy. And we've got her birth date and birthplace. And then we've got President James Wilson. And just, just for clarity, um, James died about 1838, 39, when she was a baby. Um, fought in the Florida Wars. Um, was probably right there along with um, Gentry when he, on the Christmas of 1836 when he died. because That's only Florida Wars the group of men from Boone County went to. And he was certainly living here. And then Peggy remarried to a Thomas Goff and had another son. And we'll talk about that when we get to the records of Arabella's um, mother, Margaret, because Margaret is truly my ancestor that came here with her father, the, the, the ancestor named um, Joshua. So this right here is a record of the probate for Peggy's father, um, Joshua Freeman um, and his estate. And you, you can hardly read it, but you, if you look on the, uh, about four or five lines down, it lists all the heirs of, it says John Graham of Boone County making appearance to the, the, the clerk of the Boone County Court fully, um, and it says the estate of Joshua Freeman of, died of said county. Um, and then it lists the having said heirs and it lists all the heirs, Betsy Graham, wife of uh, um, John Graham, Polly Roberts, Peggy Gaw, Jane Austen, um, and then heirs of Susanna Clarkson and Joshua Lunsford because they were grandchildren and they were getting one share. But then you get on down there, it says John Graham is the, and John Graham was another uncle of Arabella, but this is the proceedings of Joshua Freeman's um, probate record in 1843 um, in Boone County. So those records do exist. So before September 19 of 1843, um, Joshua Freeman's probate is here. And that's the one proof I have that Peggy um, Goff is his daughter, and then Peggy was married to Thomas, and Peggy is the mother of Mar um, Arabella. And then, believe it or not, because um, Arabella was listed on the air because um, when the land when it was finally settled, Arabella and her half brother James Alonzo Goff were listed as the uh, getting their monies from their grandfather's estate because their mother had died during the, that time period. All right, so this is like an extraction of John Freeman, who was happened to be Arabella's uncle, who also had an estate in Boone County. Him and his, um, he was Joshua's son. 
And I put this up here because John Freeman, when he died, he'd been married to a, a, a Smith, as in the Smith family that started Smithton. And his wife died. And then he had a daughter named Sarah Jane who also died. And the grandfather took care of him as well as his wife, Joshua Freeman's uh, wife died as well. But John died before his father did. And he had his father in 1827 become the, he knew he wrote a will. He basically wanted his father to be the head of his estate. And his father did that. But his father also took care of his, his daughter, the granddaughter, Sarah Jane. And it just so happened that Sarah Jane, the granddaughter died young as well. So all of the property of John Freeman went to his siblings and his mother and father. So that's why this is important because if you look in the next, uh, if you look, if you end up looking the next page, you're gonna see where uh, every, everyone in your family's um, mentioned in this uh, estate is gonna be because John died young, it mentions his siblings, which is my ancestor, Margaret, and it proves that they're the children of Joshua Freeman and his wife. And right here um, in 1837, you got the final settlement of John, of John Freeman, and it lists all these people. And then someone's put in there, um, for the most part, this is correct. And the portions, um, but there you see all these. And Peggy was still living here, but then again, later on, the last payment uh, showed that when Peggy died, that the two grandkids were um, uh, Arabella and her half brother. Half brother. All right, we're getting short on time here. I want to go to the next page. These books are very common to have people type these up locally. The, the record books for the county court, and we have some of the copies here in the library, so you can actually search them without having to look at microfilm. You can look in books. Um, so now we've got we've got the whole line back. We've got me, my grand, my dad Raymond, grandfather Frank, my great grandmother Luli, her mother Margaret Freeman, married Wilson Golf, and then her father Joshua Freeman, born 1770, 1779 in North Carolina, and coming to Boone County, and then dying here in 1843 as a widower. And of course, we don't really know what his wife's name is, but we think it's Jane or Arabella because those names carry through the next generations, like 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 four or five granddaughters are named Jane or Arabella. So we don't know what his wife's name was, but we're pretty sure it might be Jane. And when we find that, I'll be a, a happy camper. But we're pretty sure they came from Buncombe County, North Carolina, based on the research we've been doing. But Freeman is a very common name, and so is John, as you all know. All right, so this, well, because Joshua Freeman is my direct ancestor, we've got proof he's my direct oldest ancestor. Here's a census record of him. And if you look at uh, the very one, two, three, the fourth from the bottom is Joshua Freeman. And look who's living next door to him, William Smith. And William Smith is actually um, the, his son-in-law. It, it's, his, it's his son's father-in-law. So right next to, and then we're talking about, this is the same Smith family that started the, um, the Smith and Company. So this is the same families, but they're living here in Missouri Township in Boone County, 18 and 30. And you see where Joshua Freeman um, is actually, um, his wife is still alive in 1830, but she died before 18, um, 40, uh, 1840. So we don't know her name, but again, you're seeing everyone's living right there and they're living close to the Hatton family and they're living around Midway. Uh, if you want to give kids get an understanding of where his land is. Um, oh, there's, there's a kind of a map of that family. And I don't know, this was clear on my other presentation. I, I'm probably this was being so, rough and you can't see it but basically it's joshua freeman it's my working document of joshua freeman and his family and all the kids and each little curly q is his kids uh, and their grandkids um so let's go ahead and just do a little um back of some of the records you're going to look at when you come when you're looking for your mid-missouri ancestor you've got census records um extracted and some of the originals like we showed you you've got the birth marriage and death records that like we showed you copies of and of course, those lead you to the other possibilities like court records. Um, there are, I don't have very much immigration records, but you should certainly look for those. And then of course, on also on Ancestry, you have access to charts and forms if you wanna organize your stuff either on their website or personally. And then of course, it's free searching if you use the Daniel Boone Regional Library um, uh, through, through our library facility. So, which is kind of cool because you don't really have to pay for anything. You just look for what you can find. Now, you're not going to find everything on Ancestry, but every day they keep adding more and more stuff. But I wanted to put this up there because it is a nice tool for you to do your research, and we do offer it to our, for, to our patrons. Um, on Heritage Quest, we've got the census records as well, a lot of the county histories. Um, there's also an index for periodicals. 
that you can use um, that are programs around the whole country. You can actually order copies of them through the library in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And then of course, the Learning Center now is actually our reference, uh, our reference link. And that's more basically like trying to find people who are living today or people, um, or you could also find information on um, uh, businesses. And, uh, but again, most it's about finding the people who might be living. But again, we have lots of resources here um, on early, um, on the local history, um, everything from a transcribed obituaries, to photocopied obituaries to um, transcribed land records, uh, gazetteers, maps, all kinds of cool stuff. But on Heritage Quest, um, these are the kind of records you'll get on that website. And if you ever come to one of my presentations, I'll walk you through that website. I'm getting close to time, but I want to talk about Missouri State Archives because they're a major resource that you should be using um, locally. Their, their website, the Missouri Digital Heritage, is their website, but, they, but that links you to um, all kinds of records that you're going to be touching on your, um, on your, um, your quest. You've got um, the Death Index from 1910 to 1962. You've got county records on microfilm. And then you've got the local histories, uh, both on microfilm and actually in print form. Um, and you've got the state and federal census records as far as that they have down their library. And then of course they have records clear from the territorial and most of those have been digitized. So those are really cool records you should be looking at. And of course the Boone County Courthouse and its annexes, you got the recorder of deeds for land records and marriage records. And I couldn't show you all those today because that would be a very long, it'd be two hours, another hour worth. Probate records, I showed you a, a sampling of those that showed you some of the records on the probate. And then of course, third court records are important because that's litigation. So I didn't show you today, but I actually have litigation where Arabella was suing the people who were farming her farm, but not paying her. And she actually had to go to court for them to start paying her what she was owed for the for her, you know, renting out her land to them. And people were not paying um, when they got their crop sold. They weren't paying the portion. And then of course, the county clerk has voter registration, which, um, and this is still true today. But like, if you go to like some of the more rural counties, you can actually look at some of the old voter registration records if they still have them. They they might have been purged, but a lot of times they still have the old voter registrations from years and years ago, as well as tax records. Um, the local genealogical society of C Central Missouri and Boone County. It's located on, in Ponderosa at the Walters Wolf Genealogical Library. And the, we, we actually published the, the Reporter, which is where people publish various records. But we also have a large library with local histories and all kinds of genealogical data about Boone County families and surrounding. And of course, there's monthly meetings and programs, but they've been kind of curtailed because of the pandemic. But you can actually go over there and, or go online to the website and sign up for um, a membership, but you can actually go to the user library for free and just pay for your copies. There's always someone there to help you. And right now, because of the pandemic, they're only open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from like uh, 12 to 4.30, because it's all volunteers. And of course, the Family History Library is another resource that you can use here locally, but you can also go to familysearch.org. Um, their library that you want to go to locally is located in the Highlands. So if you're not comfortable um, doing things online yourself, they might go out there and they might help you find information and access the not only the records of the Salt Lake City, but records throughout other countries as well. Um, so that's an important place to go to. I used to go there, I have to work every night for a couple hours that I could because um, just really cool place to get basic information on your family history that you wouldn't have, especially when they live in other, other areas of the country. And of course, um, if you want to join a local or state society, um, there's the Missouri State Genealogical Association. Membership is annual, but um, you can actually look at their website without being a member. Some things are limited to being membership only, but you can sort of look at their, we do have their, um, their journals, you know, all 40 some years worth um, here at the library on, on our, in our reference collection. So you can certainly look through those and they're indexed online by year on the website. You can look at that and then come here and look at the volumes which are also individually indexed by each volume as well. And then um, thank you for attending. Um, if you have any questions, um, let me know. And do tell us about other topics that you're interested in. And it doesn't necessarily have to be me presenting, it could be somebody else, but if there's a topic you're interested in that you want us to explore, by all means, let uh, Lauren know. And then um, I don't give very many handouts out because things change so quickly, but I will tell you that I do have one that it's like the 10 free genealogical websites we can send you easily. And then um, 
as you know, on TV, they have the um, Who Do You Think You Are? That was, that was a new series that, that's, that's coming back to, back to us. So be sure you, um, uh, those shows on genealogy are pretty cool for you to learn some basic stuff about other parts of the country. And thanks for attending. And of course, there's my, there's my picture. Thank you, Tim. Um, if you have questions, you're welcome to unmute yourself and ask that question. Um, someone did ask about a, a handout. Um, the the uh, resources that Tim mentioned at the beginning, the free websites, um, and we'll be sure to include um, links to the State Historical Society, the State Archives, the genealogical societies that he mentioned, yeah. just so you have links to their websites so you can get more information about them as well. Yes. Any other any, questions? Any questions for Tim? Well, thanks for um, signing on and watching it. I hope you learned something. I hope there's something that might make you think of your own ancestor that you didn't think you should go look for. And always feel free to call and ask if I can help you to try to locate something that's not necessarily in Missouri, but somewhere else. Or at least I can get you to the place where you'd call or write to um, where you can get the form that you need to get a certain document. And I, um, I'm putting in the chat there just the link, and I will I'll make sure to include this in the um resources uh, that we send to you by email after this. Um, that is the landing spot on our website that shows you um, links to Ancestry.com, which Tim referenced, and HeritageQuest.com, and both of those you can access with your library card. Um, Ancestry, just through September, like Tim mentioned, that they're allowing some access from home because of the pandemic, and then Heritage Quest anytime you can access that from home with your library card. And then there's also a getting started uh, guide with some um, links to places that, that talk about you know, what you, how to start from the beginning um, searching your ancestors, whether they're from Missouri or, or somewhere else. All right, well, if there aren't, thank you. Andrea's saying thank you. Thank you so much, Tim. Uh, we appreciate you sharing your expertise with us as always. Um, keep watching dbrl.org slash events for more um, upcoming events, and we hope you have a great rest of your day. You're welcome, and have a good, have a good evening.